I am a huge fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and even I can admit that Marvel is not as good now as they used to be. It does seem like they are a lot more quantity over quality these days, pretty much ever since the multiverse saga began. And so now we have James Gunn's send off and farewell to Marvel Studios. This is his final bout with them. As we all know, now he is one of the presidents of DC Studios. So let's talk about James Gunn's last hurrah with Marvel. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the 32nd movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's the second film and installment in its Phase 5 in the Multiverse Saga, even though it has nothing to do with the multiverse at all. And it's the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, after the events of Avengers Endgame, Thor Love and Thunder, and the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, our beloved Guardians of the Galaxy have taken up residence on Nowhere, but now they have to go on a new mission after Rocket Raccoon is put into a pretty bad situation. He needs saving, so this mission is pretty important. Failure on this mission could lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. And now we have our final Guardians of the Galaxy adventure in the MCU. Gotta say, this movie does certainly have all the feels. It definitely does feel like a finale with our Guardians. I mean, we've known them for about nine years now. And I mean, the first Guardians movie is still one of my all-time favorite MCU movies. It's awesome. The second one, not as good, but still good. This one though, I mean, I just thought it was all right. Whoa, hey, hey, don't shoot. I just thought this movie was just okay. There were things I liked and didn't like in this movie. One thing I loved was all the characters. Rocket Raccoon, of course, he is the emotional center of this movie. I mean, he's been the emotional center of most of the Guardians adventures, but in this movie especially, we see a lot more of his past, the origins of how he came to be, and that was really interesting to see. Although it did kind of leave out one thing that I was curious about, but I'm not going to talk about that here. That would be a spoiler. But yeah, point is, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon, a standout as always. In fact, so much so that I would call him like the main character of this movie, in place of Mario returning as Peter Quill, Star-Lord. I mean, obviously I liked him in this movie as well, but it really did not seem like he had as much time in the spotlight as Rocket did. Not that that's a bad thing, I'm just letting you know. His whole deal in this movie, though, is more about Gamora. Because Gamora, once again played by Zoe Saldana, this Gamora is from the events before the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie because of the events of Avengers Endgame, and now she's here forward in time. But I thought she was pretty cool in this movie. I liked her dynamic with Peter Quill. Because, I mean, imagine, imagine you were dating someone and you were in a serious relationship with them, and then all of a sudden they got amnesia and didn't remember you at all. Yeah, I think that would be pretty frustrating. That's pretty much what Peter Quill is going through. He keeps trying to tell her, yeah, we were in love, but she has no memory of that because it wasn't with her. I like that dynamic between the two of them. I thought it was cool. Which then leads us to Nebula, who I gotta say is like one of my favorite characters in this movie. Because in terms of character growth, I think her arc has been one of the most like evolutionary among the entire crew. She was a villain in the first movie, and now she's part of the team. And I just love seeing her as a good guy in this movie. Plus, she can do some pretty cool shit. And speaking of cool shit, Groot also does some pretty cool shit. Just in terms of action, some of the stuff he does was like some of the coolest stuff in the movie. It was awesome to see. Now, as far as the villains, though, was not a fan of the villains in this movie. First up, Adam Warlock. I hated him. Yeah, I hated Adam Warlock in this movie, because that was not Adam Warlock. I'm usually not the type of guy who will compare something to the comics or other source material because I didn't grow up in the comics, but I have seen Adam Warlock in other things, like the Guardians of the Galaxy video game that came out a couple years ago. He was much more badass in that game than he is in this movie. In this movie, Adam Warlock is just kind of an idiot, which he is not supposed to be. He's powerful, I'll give him that, and he does cause some conflict in the film, but other than that, didn't dig him at all. The main villain is the High Evolutionary, played by Chug Woody Awuji from Peacemaker. And at first, I thought he was a great villain. He was easily one of the most unlikable villains in the entirety of the MCU. Like, I hated his guts. In a good way. I was like, yeah, that guy's a douchebag. He needs to be stopped. But then, and I've heard some other people say this in their reviews, but it's true, he does just start screaming at a point. I was like, dude, all right, calm down. What set you off? I don't know, but you were a lot cooler when you were more calm and collected. Now it just seems like you're that little kid who's got something to prove. Like, no, I'm a good villain, I swear! See, I'm angry! and I'm yelling! Like, just have your actions prove you're bad, you know? Like you were doing at first. I thought he was a better villain than Adam Warlock, but still, I thought Ego was a much better villain in the second movie. Now, this movie is two and a half hours long, which normally wouldn't bother me. I'm fine with a movie being that long as long as it's justified. And granted, there is a lot going on in this movie. We have Rocket's whole ordeal, then we have Star-Lord dealing with Gamora, and we have Adam Warlock in the mix, and we have other stuff going on. It's just, it's a lot. This movie really is one big balancing act. And at least in my opinion, I don't feel like it succeeded in balancing all that perfectly. 
To me, the pacing was the biggest problem with this movie. It felt kind of choppy to me. Like, the first part of the movie, it felt disjointed. There's this going on over here, then there's this going on over here, and then it kept cutting to flashbacks. Granted, the flashbacks were some of the coolest parts of the movie, but every time one happened, it seemed to come, like, out of nowhere. Like, oh, we're in a flashback now? Alright, thanks for the heads up. Not. Or at least that's how I felt. And the Guardians are going on their adventure, and I was like, alright, another Guardians adventure. We've seen Guardians adventures before, a few times now. It's not really anything new, at least in that aspect. But yeah, this being a finale to the Guardians of the Galaxy, all the pain and emotion is certainly there. I am not denying that. There were definitely some moments with the feels. Which is good, you know, this being our final adventure with the Guardians, I want that. Make us feel it, don't hold anything back. James Gunn is really good at writing heart. And let's face it, he's always been good at that. I mean, when it comes to comedy, yeah, he is hit or miss, I'll admit, at least with me. But when it comes to the hard-hitting, emotional, dramatic moments, he always hits, and this movie is no exception to that, which is why I trust him with Superman. So seriously, huge props to James Gunn for writing and directing this movie, because all the emotions certainly landed with me. As for the humor, I did laugh a lot more at the humor than I thought I would, although I'll admit some were pity laughs. There were quite a few jokes that I didn't think were funny, which I was expecting because since Guardians 2, every adventure we've had with the Guardians has had jokes that I didn't think were funny. So this one has them too. So again, that's all part of the balancing act. Some humor was good, some was not. The action was awesome though. Again, some of the stuff that the characters can do now, like Nebula and Groot, I loved seeing it. Visually, it was really cool. At a point, I was like, whoa, Groot just did that. That is so awesome. I've always wanted to see him do that. So thank you, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, for giving that to me. I mean, this is a beautiful movie. All the visual effects are just top notch. The CG and Rocket has never looked better. And I love the end of this movie. No spoilers here, of course, but the direction that James Gunn decided to end his Odyssey with, I commended. I was like, yeah, that is a good way to end the story. Huge props to that. Now, as for the music, the score this time around was not composed by Tyler Bates, who scored the first two Guardians movies, but instead it was written by John Murphy, who scored the Suicide Squad. And so one of my concerns was that they would not bring that Guardians of the Galaxy theme. Because I just love that theme. And yeah, they brought it back for this one, so phew. I was certainly relieved. The score in this movie was great. The soundtrack though, this is just a personal preference thing with me, but one of the reasons I really like the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtracks is because they were classic rock compilations. They had songs from the 70s and 80s. In this one, they make it more modern because it feels more like Peacemaker. There are some things in this movie that feel a lot more like Peacemaker, which you would think would make sense, but I don't know, I just like Guardians of the Galaxy when it didn't feel like Peacemaker. That's just me though. I mean, I like the songs on the soundtrack well enough, but it didn't really feel like Guardians of the Galaxy to me. You know what I mean? So in the end, I gotta say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is my least favorite of the three Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I don't really have the urge to see it again right away. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. It's good, but there were just some things that I felt it did wrong. I love the characters and I love the arcs they go through, especially Rocket and Star-Lord and Gamora, Nebula, all of them. Mantis and Drax as well. I love the action, I love the emotion, but this movie did not have to be two and a half hours long. It definitely could have been shorter because the pacing just brought this movie down for me, as did the soundtrack. Although again, I know that's just a personal thing with me. But of course, I do still recommend seeing this movie in theaters, although I personally would not pay full price to see it again. So in that, for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I will say, Wait until this movie's at a discount price, then go see it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You go on AMC Discount Tuesday, I think that'll be worth it. And you should check this movie out. I mean, you're probably going to anyway if you're a Marvel fan. Nothing I can do to stop you. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, have you seen it yet? What are your thoughts on it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!